of us like to just lie around the house, maybe read a book, watch a movie, a TV show, play on the computer, or my favorite, take a nap. I have to admit, just like in the first reading, I am a slave who longs for shade. Hey, I worked all week. I'm stressed out, and I'm tired, and I just want to regenerate. Even Jesus escapes once in a while to get some alone time. And whenever Jesus tries to get that alone time, here comes the disciples. Or in my case, as soon as I'm cuddled up on the couch, my wife starts to vacuum, then the famous words come out, honey, can you do me a favor? And like Jesus, I am back to serving. I know what you're thinking. We all need some kind of downtime once in a while. Even Jesus took some of this time for prayer. Several weeks back, my wife was not feeling well, so we decided to just lie around the house and watch Hallmark movies all day. I thought this would be great. Finally, a do-nothing day. No interruptions, no house cleaning, no yard work, no errands, a real do-nothing day. To my amazement, Time went by fast, and by late afternoon, I seemed more tired, kind of like I was in a fog and sleepy. We had a great day, lots of nap time. I thought I would feel more refreshed, yet I was not. I've learned that helping others not only helps them, but helps us. I find I get energy and joy helping others. How do we feel when we make someone smile? How do we feel when we help someone in need? How do we feel holding that person's hand who may have lost everything, yet we are there to listen and support? How do we feel when a person tells you, thank you for being there? Our couches, televisions, and computers take energy from us. There, there's a missing connection. We get energy from connections, like an appliance getting plugged into a socket. We get energy from exercising, hiking, shopping for our bodies. Yet exercise can be more of a solitude state of mind. And this energy can dissipate as we get older and do less exercise. What about our soul? I truly believe the more we serve with others, the more energy we receive, and we feel the love down deep inside us, which gives us happiness and a stronger faith in God. When I am at the convalescent home, many of the elderly I visit cannot exercise. They can barely move, but just sharing stories, listening, being there, expands their excitement, which creates energy. We are connected. God challenges us, and sometimes we may not be comfortable with how he challenges us. But once we say yes to God and the energy we draw from that, then with time, we wonder how we have not tried this before. By helping others, we help ourselves. Remember, as Deacon Tim said in the bulletin from last week, Jesus is God in human skin. In the gospel reading today, we can say Jesus taught his disciples and us by helping others, curing the sick, talking to people no one dared to talk with, and making us come out of our comfort zone. This frightened the disciples at first, and like the disciples, I too start off very frightened. But soon, like the disciples, with the grace of God, I put one foot in front of the other and faced my fears. When I was in my third year of the deacon formation, we were asked to spend a year doing something in social justice. Some of us went into prison ministry, others helped tutor underprivileged children, and some helped the St. Vincent de Paul with helping people find jobs. I picked the one area I was most terrified at doing, and that was bereavement. Bereavement is helping those dealing with the loss. A loss could be a job, 
a house, a pet, but mostly with a loved one's death. My teacher was named Sandy Heinisch. She had started and developed a bereavement group for Catholics in our diocese, because when her son died unexpectedly, our diocese did not have anything to help her and her family out. God had a plan. Sandy at the time was a nurse, and like many nurses, she loved helping people with patience and kindness. This showed as she trained many of us in bereavement ministry. One of the ways we were taught was with role playing. My first bereavement encounter with role playing was with a lady who should have won an Oscar for her role. I sat across from her, just as if I was doing a one-on-one -on -one meeting today with someone. She played her role extremely well. This is how it went. She had lost her husband in a car crash. She began to cry. She had four children, ages seven to six months. Her husband was the sole provider, and they had no other family. She has no way to save their house and nowhere to go. She began to cry even harder. The car her husband crashed in was their only transportation. There, I sat across from her, numb. I did what a typical guy would do. I pulled out my wallet and gave it to her. If you had not figured it out yet, yes, I failed my first role encounter in bereavement ministry. But with the grace of God, I kept at it. And having a fantastic teacher, I was able to help teach and later help develop our own bereavement group in our deanery, which we meet every Sunday here at Holy Spirit at the Fireside Lounge from 2.30 to 3.30. Jesus not only challenges us, he wants us to learn from our fears and to serve others with understanding and love and pass the newfound knowledge to others so we can break down the many walls our fear has created within us. Several Saturdays ago, Holy Spirit's RCIA group sponsored our Feed the Hungry at our Peace Center. We learned a lot about the struggles of being homeless I met and broke bread with a homeless gentleman named Bob. He helped me to get past my misconceptions. I asked Bob, what do most people on the streets need? I was waiting for the answer to be food, shelter, and a place to shower. What I learned surprised me. Three items stood out through our conversation. One very important tool is a can opener. Yes a can opener. The next one was a hand warmer, a package you shake and it will keep your hands warm for hours. They could put the hand warmer in their sleeping bags to warm them up. Another great gift is black socks. Why black? Hides the dirt. Bob told me a story that really opened my eyes. You see, he was sleeping near a bus stop. He awoke in the morning, rubbed his eyes, looked up, and saw a man sitting at the bus stop waiting for the bus. Bob said he looked at him and said, good morning. The man at the bus stop, without hesitation, said, I have no money. Does this sound familiar to our own feelings and thoughts? Do we turn our heads away when we see a homeless person out of fear? So what did Bob do, realizing Bob is homeless? Bob reached into his own wallet and tried to give the man waiting for the bus several dollars because the man said he had no money. So how do we connect with others? Where do we draw energy in these connections? What fears are holding us back from helping others? Jesus is our model. Take the chance. Reach out and full connect with those who need our help.